This is Sir Tap Tap, and today we're going to take a look at a game that I did not expect to like at all. This is Pac-Man Championship Edition DX. Um, it is a Pac-Man game, but it's not the Pac-Man game you might suspect if you, like me, only really play the old retro ones. Um, let's just take a quick peek here at, uh... Well, let's take a peek at the quick time trials here. One of the interesting things about the game is it has lots of different play modes for each map, and it has many different maps. And so, on each of the maps, there's a quick set of little time trials like this one here, and then there's a longer time trial that takes maybe 10 minutes if you're bad, usually closer to a little less than 10 minutes, um, if you're decent. Um, then it has these little mini ones that can be anywhere from 20 seconds to a minute to two minutes. And then... I didn't mean to do that again. Um, you progressively unlock... You know, I've completed the game, but... First, you'd only have time trial short one. And then, as you beat it, you get the next one. And it gives you this nice sense of progress as you're going through the game. And then, after you complete everything in this map you'll go ahead and unlock the next map. And there's a whole bunch of different maps to play. And they all play a little differently. Take a peek at a score attack here. Another neat feature of the game, it has visuals from a bunch of different styles of Pac-Man games, like um, the Lego blocks. I remember being in one of the 16-bit Pac-Man games. And then it's got some... Like, this is more like a retro... Or a, like a future, retro future sort of take on the original Pac-Man. And then you can also set the characters um, separately and pick your background music. The background music is pretty good. Um, what makes this game different is that um, it's a lot faster paced than the original Pac-Man and your goal is basically to eat all the pellets and there's not that many pellets on each map but once you eat all the pellets on one side a fruit appears and then you eat the fruit and then that side of the map clears over again, and there are more ghosts, and the pellets are in a different um, in a different alignment. And then, as you're going to see right here, if you eat the ghosts, the game actually speeds up a bit. And that has a few different effects. Um, it makes the game harder to play a bit, but it's generally beneficial to you because everything in the game is time-based. So you're limited based on what you can do in your allotted time. So... The game gets harder as you speed up, but it also gives you way more potential to either outscore your highest score, or it gives you more potential to beat the uh, time trial. So, generally speaking, you want to go as fast as you can, but if you mess up, your speed goes down. That happens when you die, or when you use a bomb, which is another new mechanic, as far as I know. I don't remember ever using bombs in Pac-Man game. But when you use a bomb, the whole ghost trail goes back into its, you know, cage. And then your speed goes down a little bit. Um, the bomb is more of a get me out, you know, get me out of here button. Um, the power pellets, as always, are a good way to get a good amount of score. And what's interesting in this game is sometimes some of the ghosts will have power pellets in them. So you can make a chain of power-ups just by eating all the ghosts that have power pellets in them. And that keeps you safe and lets you build up your speed as you eat more ghosts. And eating ghosts is one of the primary ways to both speed up your timer and boost your, ta your uh, game speed. So in both the score attack and time attack, you really want to eat as many ghosts as possible without, you know... Um, well, you don't want to eat as many as possible in the time trial, because you want to actually eat all the pellets quick. But it's still generally beneficial to eat long trails of ghosts. And you'll notice, um, ghosts don't act quite like they used to in the original Pac-Man. They sort of line up. Um, in that, like, the rainbow conga line you see is generally what ghosts do after you wake them up. Um, if you stop getting power pellets for one second, which I'm currently being bad at doing. Um, so they'll get along conga line, and then the conga line thing is sort of like um, it blocks off your paths as you get as it gets longer, and it makes the game more complicated. So once the conga line is about full, you usually want to use a power pellet if you can, because you can see here they're blocking my routes of escape, and then there'll be um, 
there's the rainbow conga line, and then there's also the original four ghosts, you know, um, the pink one, blue one, orange one, and those still have their original behaviors, and they'll, until they join the conga line, they'll sort of wander around and block off paths is the most dangerous thing they usually do. So, all in all, the game is a lot faster paced than the original Pac-Man, and it, it just, damn it, it has this intensity to it with the colors and the music, um, and just everything comes together and makes the game feel really intense, and it's partially due to the time-based nature of it, because you can't just, you know, dawdle around. Every mode in the game is time-based, except for the um, free play mode, of course, which that's another unlockable. Um, and also, the with the ghosts, when they're chasing you, um, as you notice, if you turn towards them, um, there's actually this like tense moment where the time slows down, so if you accidentally make a wrong button press, you're not going to immediately get punished and die. Um, it gives you a little grace period to, you know, unscrew yourself, and so you can get trapped like I just did there. Um, so you're not completely safe, but it actually makes the game feel more intense, even though it, I guess it makes it slightly easier, because you're not for sure going to die if you just press the wrong button for a quarter of a second. But it just makes it feel tense instead of, like, crush your face difficult. Um, and then there's bombs, which you should use if you're about to take a hit. You don't want to waste bombs too much, because, you know, they slow you down, and you don't get points for using a bomb. You get points for eating. Um, and you get more points, more ghosts you eat, up to a point. Um, and... All in all, all in all, intense is the main word I would use to describe the game. It's not something I would have expected from a Pac-Man game at all. But it ends up really fun, and the high score mode is fairly deep for a score challenge thing. Um, and we'll get to see a breakdown here in a second of my... Uh, well, first you see the way your score ramped up. That can be interesting to see. And then you see this. This is where all your points went through, charted out. This is actually pretty cool. It shows you... Um, one thing you'll notice is the pellets themselves are worth, you know, an okay baseline of score. The fruits are worth, you know, another baseline of score. The ghosts are really where you get your points. And as you'll see, every time I got a power pellet, I ate a whole ton of ghosts in one short period of time. So that's where you get those score spikes. So you want to time your ghost eating, to, or your power pellets, to when you can eat a bunch of ghosts. Um... And there are quite a few unlockables in this game. You know, as you progress, you'll unlock more maps. And then there's also a set of trophies. Um, personally, I really like the trophies because they really gave you something to work for. Um, and I mean, the unlockables, just one of the problems I had with Pac-Man is just it was a pure score attack game. And I mean, you know, back then there wasn't really anything else, so I don't blame it for, you know, being an old game. But this really takes... It has that classic gameplay, plus, you know, added levels of, you know, um, it's just a more action-based Pac-Man and more high speed. Um, and in addition to that, it gives sort of the new game, you know, there's stuff to unlock and stuff to explore and do and stuff, um, you know, that gives it more of a lasting appeal and it gives you, it gives you a sense of direction. This is also one of my favorite um, maps in the game. I think it's called Dungeon. But every time you clear one of the levels, the uh, map changes. And you'll notice most of the time the maps change symmetrically. There is one of them where all of the action takes place on one side of the stage, basically. And the other is devoid of fruit, which that's also kind of an interesting thing. They do quite a bit with the different mazes. It's more than just different layouts. There's some different... They do some really cool stuff with the maps that I would not have expected for Pac-Man. I sound like I'm hating kind of on the original Pac-Man, but I, don't know, I just think this is a really good evolution of that concept. Um, the game, I think, I forgot to mention, I think it's like 10 bucks on PlayStation Network. Um, it's whatever amount of play money on the Xbox. I think it's 800 MS points for $10. Um, so yeah, I, it's a pretty good deal. I would not have picked it up if it weren't free for PlayStation Plus, 
but if I knew what I knew now, I would definitely consider it worth the ten dollars. Um, and I mean, I mean, there's a lot more to it than just plain old Pac-Man, which is was my greatest fear. I mean, I really love the visual effects and the different map designs. Um, by default, the map designs are randomized, so you'll get a good variety as you play. You won't get bored of the same map layout. I'm probably going to die here. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to show. There's a lot of content, but I mean, it's mostly... You know... Honestly, the gameplay doesn't change too super much. Oh yeah, I'm definitely not going to win this. But I mean, I never got bored of it. I took a couple of breaks when I played through it, but I never felt like I was grinding through it to unlock everything or unlock all the trophies, so I think there's a good amount of content without feeling grindy, and everything is in small bursts. Like, the longest game mode you'll have here is a 10-minute score attack, and so it's all bite-sized stuff. Oh, speaking of bite-sized, I think it is also on Windows 8 and maybe Windows Phone or Windows RT. Um, so you can get it on that platform if you want to. I, this, I'm playing it on PlayStation. And if you want more relaxed stuff, the free mode has... Um, you get infinite lives, infinite bombs, and you can just, you know, play Pac-Man Championship Edition. Oh wow, it sets you to... Yeah, oh yeah, right, it lets you set your game speed. The generic game speed is, um, you know, just down to one. It also, I think it has online scoreboards and crap. I'm never really one to pay attention to those, though, so I don't, you know, I have no idea how competitive the scene is, or, you know, I don't know much about that. But It's definitely a fun little game. Um, if you like Pac-Man, or if it looks interesting, or you like, you know, high speed, I guess I'd call it puzzle? E? Not quite, I don't know what I'd call it, as far as a genre, but it's pretty dang fun. And man, the Game Speed 1, do not play on Game Speed 1, because this, this is not intense. But everything else is. So there you go. And I refuse to give it a numerical score, but I do recommend picking it up. Unless you're like, you totally hate Pac-Man. But I mean... It's pretty fun for 10 bucks. There's no multiplayer, by the way, so if you want multi... I don't know how multiplayer Pac-Man would even work, but however it would work, this game doesn't have it, so sorry. Right. 